Welcome back, science fans. For decades, the superpowers have been one button away from nuclear annihilation. Amidst this backdrop of fear, citizens had only one option if the unthinkable ever happened, and that's to escape into a fallout shelter. These shelters, built to protect the population against nuclear explosions and their radioactive aftermath, are one of humanity's only options for long-term survival. But what exactly is a fallout shelter, and how does it function as a safe haven? Let's dive in to understand their design, purpose, and the science behind their protection. Before you watch this, though, you may want to watch the video above to learn about what you'll live through after a nuclear war. When a nuclear bomb detonates, it unleashes immense energy and a cocktail of radioactive particles and debris. This is what we call fallout. It's made up of tiny radioactive particles from debris blasted into the atmosphere and now falling back to Earth. These particles can travel hundreds, even thousands of miles depending on the weather. Exposure to fallout can kill you because it emits ionizing radiation and increases cancer risk. So how does a fallout shelter reduce exposure to these harmful elements? It's all about the materials and construction. The shelter is typically surrounded by thick walls made of dense concrete or lead. These materials are used because of their atomic structure. Dense materials have tightly packed atoms, making them more effective at absorbing and scattering the penetrating gamma rays that make up nuclear fallout. Concrete, often reinforced with steel, is preferred because it's relatively low cost and can offer a lot of protection without being as heavy or expensive as lead. On the other hand, lead, known for its high density, is incredibly effective at blocking radiation. It's often used with other materials to enhance a shelter's protection. Most shelters are built underground. Think basements or subterranean facilities. Why underground? Being below the Earth's surface adds an additional layer of protection. The soil and rock act as a natural barrier, absorbing and reducing the radiation that can penetrate the shelter. Being underground also shields you from the initial blast and intense heat of the explosion. But at the end of the day, it really depends on where you are during the attack. Shelters farther away from the epicenter would naturally experience lower radiation levels. Obviously, this gives you a big head start in surviving the unthinkable. Air filtration systems are critical to fallout shelters. These systems have a vital role to prevent radioactive particles as small as a few micrometers in diameter from infiltrating the interior. They typically include a combination of mechanical filters and chemical absorbents. The mechanical filters, often made of HEPA material, are designed to capture particles from the incoming air. They trap particles as small as 0.3 micrometers, effectively removing most of the radioactive material. Certain absorbents, made up of activated carbon, can also be incorporated, but play a different role to protect the interior. They absorb harmful gases and vapors and help to purify the air. The combination of HEPA filters and chemical absorbents ensures that the shelter's air remains free from the most dangerous components of nuclear fallout. Next, you have to plan your food supplies carefully. All the best quality air in the world will be useless if you end up starving to death. Remember, nuclear wars are long-term events where the outside environment will be poisoned for weeks or even months. For a typical shelter, the goal is to stock non-perishable, nutrient-dense, and easy-to-prepare meals to accommodate an adult's requirement of about 2,500 calories per day. A typical morning starts with a simple breakfast consisting of canned fruits, oatmeal or high-energy cereal bars, accompanied by a beverage like powdered milk or instant coffee. These options provide a quick and nutritious start to the day without cooking. For lunch and dinner, meals are often more substantial to meet the higher caloric demands. This could involve creatively combining different ingredients to try and make the meal somewhat palatable. Um, but you really need to set your expectations if you're eating during the end times. Anyway, lunch could be a mix of canned vegetables and beans served over rice or pasta. Dinner would be a more protein-rich meal, perhaps a stew or soup made from canned meats or lentils, supplemented with dehydrated vegetables. Adding spices stored in the shelter can help enhance the flavor of these meals. Hydration is crucial. 
so water is carefully rationed to ensure that each person receives at least one gallon per day, covering both drinking and sanitation needs. Eating in a fallout shelter isn't the same as sitting down for Thanksgiving dinner, but if you plan it right, you will be able to survive in an otherwise deadly situation. Next, medical supplies are also crucial. These include comprehensive first aid kits, essential medicines, and treatments specifically for radiation exposure. A fully stocked fallout shelter will include potassium iodide tablets, which protect the thyroid gland from radioactive iodine. These tablets work by saturating the thyroid with non-radioactive iodine, which prevents it from absorbing the bad radioactive iodine in the fallout. This simple measure can significantly reduce the risk of thyroid cancer. Other accessories often include radiation detectors. Geiger counters and other devices will allow you to monitor radiation levels, both inside and outside the shelter. This is crucial for knowing when it's safe to emerge. Modern fallout shelters have evolved. Think of state-of-the-art security features, like solar panels or wind turbines or even independent water supply systems. Some even resemble luxurious underground homes complete with living areas, kitchens, and entertainment systems. While primarily designed for protection against nuclear fallout and natural disasters, they also protect occupants from armed marauders. If society falls apart, these shelters must have physical barriers to prevent your neighbors from breaking down the doors. These include reinforced doors that are much thicker and stronger than standard construction. Powerful locking systems also help to stop people from getting in. Surveillance systems, both inside and outside the shelter, will allow you to monitor your surroundings. Some shelters also incorporate biometric security systems like fingerprint or retina scanners, ensuring that you're the only one who can access the shelter. These shelters are often kept secret. This is important because if many people know where it is, it will become a target. But while these features enhance security, no shelter can be guaranteed to be impervious to all forms of attack, especially from groups of people intent on getting inside. The primary focus remains on protection from environmental threats, with security against human threats being secondary. Fallout shelters have evolved from their Cold War origins. Back then, nuclear war seemed inevitable. But now, these shelters are considered for more than just the unthinkable. From environmental crises to the Unexpected curveballs of modern times, they're our safety net against the unknowns of today's world. Amazingly, they've shifted from historical artifacts to essential modern-day protections. Liked what you saw? Go ahead and hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Your support means a lot and helps us continue exploring fascinating topics like this. Until the next time, 